Hey everyone, welcome to this week's video. I'm glad to be back. I'm going to try and get back on the regular train for posting these. For this video, I wanted to do fan art from The Last of Us 2. It's a franchise I really, really love. I played the first one a lot. And I did this painting when I first saw the trailer for the second part. And I thought it'd be super fun now that the second part is out to sort of revisit the, the same painting. But after playing the game for a bit, I still haven't finished it. Uh, I want to do an interpretation of how I see the game and kind of cool way of revisiting an older idea. The first thing I did before I started painting, I sort of put together a mood board of a bunch of abandoned places uh, and how sort of things look like when they've been torn down by nature for a bit. I also added the painting I did before uh, in the mood board. So I did a quick drawing to try and figure out how I wanted to approach the image. And I wanted to have similar layout to the previous version, you know, sort of like in the staircase kind of thing, but I wanted to change the story. Because in the original idea, she was sort of fighting some guys and she was walking up the stairs. Because I remember when I saw the trailer for the first time, uh, a big thematic for the game is revenge. Um, and I, I wanted to take a slightly different direction in this painting uh, because I wanted to capture more of the adventure feel that I really like about the game, you know. There's so many of these creepy places where you have to go into maybe a flooded basement or like a really dark area of a garage, maybe the bottom floor of a garage building. And it's so scary and uncomfortable. And I sort of want to capture that on the painting, but not, not super creepy. It's just like she's about to enter this area. So there's still, you know, a bit of sunlight and making it feel not, not too dark. And that was like the original direction I had in mind for this image. So what I'm trying to do first is really just block out everything in the image I'm using a lot of different hues if you look at the wall there is some orange there is a green a bit of yellow and it's because i really want like a bit of shift in hues because it's very moldy it's very wear torn down so i want to get a lot of variation in my colors early on in the image I'm trying to get a lot of texture as well. That's why I'm using one of my brushes that has a pretty heavy texture on it because it's easier for me if I build the image with the texture early on than trying to bake it in later. You can do is so use a more smoother brush and then you use photo textures to add or paint in your textures yourself later. I just feel like it's easier if you do it early on. Also when I'm working uh, at this stage in the image, I sort of I feel like the pose of the character really doesn't match what I'm looking for um, and I don't know yet how to solve it and whenever I run into those issues I tend to leave it and just focus on things I know how to solve and I'll leave those problems for later on. So as I was working on it I started feeling a bit overwhelmed by all the colors and textures and because the image is so close it gets much harder I feel like whenever you do an illustration. So what I did was I, I really needed to focus on just getting the values to read right. And there's this awesome setup in Photoshop, I'm going to show it in a moment, where you can paint the colors even though it's black and white. So let's jump in to see how that gets done. So the first thing you need to do to set up this setup is you go to View, Proof Setup, and you go to Custom. And then you choose, you have to select dot grain 15%. You can also do 20. I'm not sure the difference. I like 15. You hit OK. And if you press Control Y on PC, I don't know the bind for Mac, uh, it allows you to shift between black and white and color. But what's amazing about this, not only can you quickly turn to black and white, but if you, even if you turn to black and white and you color pick, it thinks the image is in color, so you can paint with a black and white setup, but it's using actual colors. And I find this to be super helpful if you want to try to determine the values a bit better, but unable to do it with colors, because sometimes it can be overwhelming. And I really like doing this throughout my process. And after working on the black and white for a while, I felt more comfortable moving into colors. But throughout the process, I always encourage you to try and turn the image black and white. It's a pretty easy key bind to set up, but it's super nice to just sometimes, you know, you just want to check your values, make sure things read well. And it's just an easy way to check on things. 
When I was happy with the values, I started focusing on more tinier details, like the leaves that we have coming through the window. And I really like this, it's a minor thing, but I really like, you know, to show that the environment sort of has grown so much out of control that, you know, the trees are just growing through the windows and sort of breaking the contrast between the building that's separating from the outside, you have a bit of the outside coming in. And I really like the detail that was in the original thumbnail as well. So I sort of wanted to bring that back in. And I'm sort of getting to the point where I can't hold off on when to draw the character. I feel like I've solved majority of things in the background. Uh, I'm getting pretty happy with the way it looks, but at a certain point I always try to keep uh, a big part of the image to the same degree. And as the background is getting finished, I really felt like I had to go back and try and solve the character. So I did some sketching to really try and figure out, you know, what am I trying to communicate with her? And the idea I like, you know, I, I sort of wanted to keep Ellie on edge. You know, she's stepping into this basement that's filled with water and who knows what else could be lurking there. So I wanted her to be a bit cautious, you know. And I wanted to be on, on guard by maybe having one of her weapon. I felt like the shotgun in the original idea was a bit overkill. The pose didn't really support anything I was trying to communicate, but I liked the idea she had some sort of weapon ready. In the original image, she sort of had uh, like a machete or a knife of sort, but I wanted to use the revolver. I think it's a pretty cool uh, weapon in the game. It's a very classic type of weapon and I quite like using it when I'm playing. So I sort of want to capture that. And as I'm trying to figure out the pose itself, I'm, I drop, I put a, just a white layer on the background and drop the opacity so I don't see as much of the background as possible because I find it super distracting. And I'm just trying to just focus on the character, or try to not get stressed up by the surrounding, just trying to make the character feel as natural as possible. And I'm just trying to block her out just very quickly with a flat color to see how does it feel because it's still really easy to do changes at this point in the process. And hey, we're getting close to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it and there was something in here for you to take away for your own work. If you're playing the game itself, I'd love to hear what you think about it. Are you excited by it? Did you play the first one? I'd love to hear in the comment section below. But try to keep it spoiler free for people who might not have finished it yet. So thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful evening.